If you were looking to terminate a pregnancy, you'd probably start by searching online, which could lead you to the website of an abortion provider. But it could also lead you to sites like these, which offer free ultrasounds and pre-abortion counseling. And if you made an appointment at one, you'd actually end up at a place like this. We want every woman coming in here in that difficult situation to choose life. And that is our mission statement, is to decrease abortion in our area. This is what's called a crisis pregnancy center, or CPC. And it doesn't offer abortions. There are thousands of centers like this across the country, many of them funded by taxpayer dollars. Certain places will say that pregnancy resource centers literally discourage abortion. We don't do that directly. We really don't. But for many people, ending up at a crisis pregnancy center when they're looking for an abortion can be deeply unsettling. I feel like I have been put through something that I didn't need to be put through. At the end of the day, like, I had already made up my mind. I already knew it was impossible. I already knew I couldn't. So entertaining the idea hurt a little more. Yeah. It's an emotional toll. This is a stressful situation people are going through, and those centers are creating barriers to them that makes it even more stressful. CPCs also face little oversight. And the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade means that could have new consequences. No justice! If you interact with a CPC on a chatbot that pops up online or an app or call one of the hotlines, not knowing it's a CPC hotline, your medical, sexual, reproductive, health, addiction, relationship history can wind up in an anti-abortion database that does not have to adhere to privacy protections. So what happens when you have thousands of centers that look like medical clinics, but are actually part of the anti-abortion movement? We spoke to abortion providers and experts, met with someone who went to a CPC, and visited one ourselves to figure out the impact of crisis pregnancy centers at a time when access to abortion is being rolled back across the country. Hi, this is following up for from your recent visit at our Virginia Beach Center. We're just checking in to see how you're doing and how we can support you. Thank you. So this was all over a month um, from when I walked in, they were still calling. Estefania found the Kime Centers by searching online for the abortion pill. Comprehensive abortion consultations are provided to our patients' calls today. They didn't promise that they would, you know, that they do abortion referrals, but it certainly sounds like they're trying to imply it. Estefania made an appointment at the Kime Center in Virginia Beach the same day she found out she was pregnant. I was nervous, but I was also expecting to come back knowing a lot more and being a lot more informed. And I thought maybe by being more informed, I'd be like a little less scared. I didn't think anyone was gonna sit down with me and try to talk me out of having an abortion. So yeah. It's gonna be, I think, the, the, the one at the, on the left. But it's on this building. Okay. I think the red flags didn't start coming until they sent me to this like consultation room. It looked like a tiny living room. And when I was waiting, I remember they had the, um, like those models of what the fetus looks like at different periods. I was like, this, that's a weird thing to have in, a, in an abortion clinic, right? A counselor came in and started asking her very personal questions. Like, tell me who's, who's with you right now? Um, how long have you guys been together? Are you guys planning on like getting married? She was like, well, I am here just as an unbiased third party, but let's make a pros and cons list. And there were, there were always counter arguments to what I had to say. Um, school, the fact that I wasn't ready, she was like, no parent is ever really ready. And then there was also the fact that she kept referring to it as a baby. And I think, I think at that point, 
it didn't do anything but make me feel a little worse about myself. After about 30 minutes, a nurse came in and told Estefania for the first time that the center didn't provide or refer for the abortion pill. I remember like immediately being like, what is this then? If you're not telling me how to get an abortion, then like, what am I doing here? What can you give me? Eventually, her boyfriend Sam joined them. And that's when they say the counselor started to frighten them. She started saying how like you may see little hands or little feet and maybe you're not ready to see that. Uh, she was like, I don't want to scare you, I just want you to know and I just want you to be prepared. But it scared me, it scared me a lot. And then towards the end, she was like, even if later on you guys decide to have other babies, it's never going to be this baby again. Um, and that broke me. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't apologize. That's what it says. When I wasn't there, I wish I had said I want to leave. More than anything, I wish I had stood up for myself and said, I don't feel like this is correct. I wish I had gone straight to Planned Parenthood. Two weeks later, she did. She chose to keep the printout from her ultrasound, even though she ended the pregnancy. What the Kime Centers and other CPCs are doing isn't new. It's the latest evolution of a playbook developed back in the 80s when crisis pregnancy centers were opening across the country. An anti-abortion activist named Robert Pearson wrote this manual on how to start a crisis pregnancy center. It had scripted answers to questions like, do you do abortions there? And arguments to use against women who say they have the right to control their own body. To get women to come to a center, Pearson's first tip was to place ads in newspapers for free pregnancy tests that looked exactly like ads for abortion clinics. Today, it's digital ads that show up in searches for things like abortion pill or abortion information. Next, Pearson suggested CPCs look for office space near what he called an abortion chamber, which is something that still happens. For example, this is a CPC in Jacksonville, Florida, that's across the street from an abortion provider. And it has an almost identical name and building sign. The third pillar of Pearson's strategy was for centers to divide into two distinct operations by choosing two names. The Kime Center Estefania went to is actually run by a nonprofit called the Crisis Pregnancy Center of Tidewater. And its website is upfront about the organization's anti-abortion and religious views. Unlike the one Estefania found, which looks more clinical and makes no religious references. The Kime Centers did not respond to insiders' request for comment on this story. Alice Marcassani is the executive director of a different crisis pregnancy center in Pennsylvania. So, let me pull a couple of things. She says the center's purpose isn't to deceive women, but to offer them alternatives to abortion. We don't feel like there's any kind of bait and switch or, you know, and if there is ambiguity or, or just like, mm, I don't know, do they do this or do they not do that? Yeah, yeah, we're real, real friend, friendly, very clear. some cute stuff there. This is just very soothing for me to come in here and um, just get back on center, really. Just center myself and this tells me why I'm here. It's kind of cute. She designed this baby boutique, a common feature of crisis pregnancy centers. A lot of those women are getting pressure to terminate. We want them to hear their own voice and their own instinct and see these beautiful things and have them picture, have them picture themselves actually parenting this child and what it would be like to, to hold them and put them in one of these beautiful sleepers or onesies. People who continue their pregnancies can take free parenting classes and earn points to redeem for diapers, car seats, and baby clothes. The center also gives away maternity clothes and baby formula. 
and it offers other services, like a mentorship program for dads in prison. Our root of everything is the love of God. This is the motivation for every dime that's given here and every diaper that's given out is just a testament to the love of God for humanity and for people in need. Like most CPCs though, there is no mention of its religious or anti-abortion stance on its client-facing website. We just want women to feel comfortable and welcome and we don't really care that they know what we believe. Simple things, it's just to say we're acknowledging you and your womanhood. Sandra Woods has been a volunteer counselor here for five years. From the age 17 to 24, I wound up having four abortions. But when I became a Christian, my whole thought process shifted. And I realized, in my opinion, what I had done was wrong. And I knew I needed to speak to other women about those choices that they might have made. When she counsels women, she presents them with three options. I tell her the truth. Well, you can have the baby. You can abort the baby. You can put the baby up for adoption. So let's explore those three things. We show them the options in this, in this very com comprehensive pamphlet. On the surface, the pamphlet looks like something you'd get in any doctor's office. And pages of citations make it seem like a trustworthy source of information. Does a fetus feel pain? Scientists continue to debate when an unborn baby begins to feel pain. However, considerable research supports that not only do babies experience pain before birth, but they feel it intensely. That is from Journal of the American Medical Association. But here's the problem. That study actually concluded that evidence regarding the capacity for fetal pain is limited. The pamphlet also promotes so-called abortion pill reversal, which medical experts say isn't supported by science. This brochure was produced by an evangelical organization called CareNet, one of several national anti-abortion groups that provide CPCs with everything from client materials to legal advice. Some even offer funding for ultrasound machines. Alice's Center, like many CPCs, offers free ultrasounds, but tells women to wait until seven weeks to get one, so they'll be able to see the heartbeat. And we've seen many women will respond uh, at the end of their ultrasound. They, they will see the heartbeat and see the baby and choose to carry that, that baby. And that's the driver for pregnancy centers to go medical. Most of them start small with the parenting program and the, the boutique, but then they like to expand because this really is so impactful. There is no data to support that viewing an ultrasound at a CPC will change a woman's mind about abortion. But a 2014 study showed that only a small percentage of women who viewed an ultrasound at an abortion provider decided to then continue their pregnancies. Still, Alice says it's an important part of what they do at the center. It pumps the brakes on their decision. And really, we never tell them, this is the decision you should make. We're just giving them all the information and just telling them, take your time. But time is something many people looking to terminate their pregnancies don't have, especially as more states restrict or ban abortion. Experts predict that more than half of Americans will soon live closer to a CBC than to an abortion provider. And even in a state like Pennsylvania, where access is unrestricted up to 24 weeks, doctors who provide abortions say a visit to a CBC can have lasting effects. When a person walks into a crisis pregnancy center, they are not even told factual medical information about their pregnancies. I suspect that when they come to us, they don't know if we're telling the truth either. Lisa Pereira sees patients who have been to CPCs all the time. When you throw these fake clinics in the mix, it, it, it elevates the, the mistrust that people have for the medical establishment. Nationally, there are more than three CPCs for every abortion clinic. And that ratio is even higher here. There is nine anti-abortion centers to one abortion provider in Pennsylvania. 
Okay, absolutely. I'll be able to help you. I can start you off with a file, ask some medical questions, see where you are in the pregnancy, and go from there. The hardest part about that really is trying to establish some sort of sense of security after being lied to and building some trust with our patients so that they know that they finally have reached someone that's gonna be able to help them. Tara Murtha is a researcher who has investigated the rise of crisis pregnancy centers. What are the consequences of people coming into contact with these places and thinking that they're legitimate healthcare providers? The CBC industry functions really as like a barrier to delay, if not deter, access to legitimate healthcare. Could you sort of walk me through like what that looks like? It's a system systematized, coordinated way of disseminating anti-abortion talking points. Um, to push these false and misleading, medically inaccurate uh, claims about abortion, pregnancy, and contraception, typically, uh, into the mainstream. A lot of people don't realize this, but CPCs are as opposed to contraception as they are to abortion. So you also see a lot of misinformation about contraception. The anti-abortion movement also claims certain forms of birth control are abortion. Anti-abortion activists say CPCs will help women who no longer have access to abortion. We have built an ecosystem of support to love you and serve you for free. There are thousands of pregnancy resource centers around this country with open doors ready to help these women. Experts say there's a link between states that restrict access to abortion and ones that fund CPCs. They're not going to suddenly turn off the faucet. We'll see the CPCs agitating for more money under the premise of helping the very people that they pushed into this uh, situation. 13 states have collectively given CPCs nearly half a billion dollars since 2010. In its 2022 budget, Texas allocated more than $50 million to an Alternatives to Abortion program, which includes funding for CPCs. That's $20 million more than it gave its Children with Special Needs program. Some states, like Pennsylvania, also divert federal dollars intended as emergency funds for low-income families. Instead of just allowing the person, a family, to buy a diaper with a ton of money, now you've given that money to the anti-abortion activists who create an obstacle course and coerce you know, participation in anti-abortion counseling that you have to do for an hour to get enough mommy bucks to get the diaper you could have just purchased. And even when they get public funds, most CPCs don't have to abide by patient privacy laws because they aren't healthcare providers. That means if someone calls the so-called abortion pill reversal hotline CPCs advertise, the information they provide could be disclosed to anyone, including law enforcement in states where abortion is illegal. The idea from the privacy point of view that we have the anti-abortion movement actively collecting, identifying information and history of people specifically who began the process of medication abortion is very alarming. Attempts to regulate CPCs have been going on for decades. In 2014, Google tried to deal with misleading search results by removing deceptive ads for crisis pregnancy centers. Then in 2015, California required CPCs to disclose if they weren't medically licensed. But national anti-abortion groups fought the California law all the way to the Supreme Court, where it was struck down for violating the First Amendment. In 2019, Google started adding disclaimers to ads for centers that don't provide abortions. And after pressure from lawmakers, Google added the disclaimers to location-based search results too. But Tara says there's still a lot more to be done to regulate CPCs and to make sure pregnant people actually get the support they need. Defunding is number one. Installing basic accounting oversight transparency mechanisms uh, for the remaining CPCs. I think that something that's missed out on is actually providing the supports that CPCs pretend to. I think we should be able to have centers that support people that are pregnant and want to continue their pregnancies while also having legal abortion for the people that don't want to be forced to continue their pregnancies. Estefania ultimately managed to get the medical care she was looking for. But her experience at a CPC is something that still haunts her. Every time I look at the sonogram, I still hear her voice say, like, we're all individuals. You're not going to have this baby again. 
Honestly, every time I think of it, I just get really upset. We shouldn't allow anyone to push their agenda like that, especially in women that are so vulnerable. Nothing they could have done, not even their like programs of like parenting classes and free diapers, because at the end of the day, they can't control the fact that I didn't have the money, the space, the time. I just was not ready and words can't make you ready for that.